So you have probably clicked on this video because you are thinking about ways to elevate your financial situation. You might be thinking about the reasons why you're not making strides financially. Perhaps you're earning and you've been saving, but you can't really see the difference between where your life was a year ago versus now, or maybe even 10 years ago versus where you are today. Well, in this video, I'll be sharing with you five common things that may be acting as a hindrance to your financial situation and you progressing financially. And these elements might actually be keeping you poor. And I will also include a bonus point, so make sure you watch this video until the end. My name is Elijah Marquette, let's get started. So I have been guilty of a lot of these points myself in the past, and some of them I'm still sort of working through, but I thought to share with you the things that I've done that really have made a difference, and I hope they make a difference to you too. The first thing that might be keeping you financially constrained and poor is fast fashion. Now, I am a lover of fashion. I love good clothes, I love to look nice, but I also know that fast fashion is not actually built to last. We buy a lot of clothes year in, year out, and unfortunately, if you don't buy good quality clothes, they tend not to last. After one or two wears, you find that they're either ripped or perhaps they faded and they're just not fit for purpose. And what I found over the last few years is that buying less clothes, but when you buy, buying quality things is actually a lot better and will help your finances go a long way. And for those who enjoy fashion and style, one tip I will give you is that when you're buying new clothes or perhaps looking for aesthetics that might fit your style and looking to build perhaps a capsule wardrobe or something like that, buy staple items. So if you are a lady, some staple items might be a great black dress, perhaps a great pair of black shoes, a dark coat, which will always come in useful at winter time, perhaps a nice crisp white shirt, something like that. And if you're a gentleman, well, I'm not really great with men's fashion, so I'll leave it to the experts. Perhaps a very nice crisp white shirt, a nice suit and some linen trousers and a nice looking pair of shoes. So to summarize, fast fashion, which leads to you churning your wardrobe more often than not, actually might be keeping you poor. The second point is credit cards or what I like to call sometimes bad debt. I remember when I was very young and I was getting my first bank account, my banker at that point said to me, if you can avoid taking out credit cards, make sure you do that. And I know some people might be asking, well, if I need to build up my credit, how do I do that without taking out debt? Well, as I said in the beginning, I like to term credit cards as bad debt. So you have good debt and you have bad debt. Good debt to me would be a mortgage payment on a property because the property will appreciate over time. You can get rental income from your property. So with a mortgage, you are actually taking out a loan which will in turn, over time, improve your financial situation. So for me, that is good debt. Credit cards, on the other hand, you're paying interest on consumption debt. So perhaps you've bought a new TV or you've bought a new car. These are depreciating assets, which means that the minute you walk out of the store, the value starts to depreciate. So if you were to buy a new TV at $1,000, for example, and you sold it six months later, you're not likely to get $1,000 for it. So it's depreciated in value. And so your credit cards actually encourage you to spend more on depreciating assets instead of investing that interest payment into something or an asset that will grow over time. The next point, which is tied into the previous point is debt. As I said, bad debt. So debt that encourages you to spend more on assets that don't grow over time. Now, of course, I'm aware that not everyone earns enough to not be in a situation where they have to take out debt, especially in today's world where inflation is really wrecking havoc across board. But I will say to you that the quicker you can clear up your debt, the better. Because like I said in the previous point, your debt is actually eaten into the income that you could be saving or perhaps investing for the future. The unfortunate thing with having a lot of debt is that it keeps you in captivity. It keeps you in bondage. You can't really enjoy life. You can't be relaxed without thinking, oh, well, instead of going on holiday with my family or instead of enjoying that extra slice of cake, you know, I should be saving up to pay off my debt. So my recommendation would be, if you can clear up your debt as quickly as possible, go ahead and do that. And going forward, try to avoid, as much as is within your power, try to avoid taking out increasing amounts of debt. The fourth point that could be keeping you poor is not being able to distinguish between what you want and what you need. Now your basic necessities, things like food, shelter, accommodation, clothes to wear, 
things like that are necessities. Those are the basic needs of life. Now buying that extra Chanel bag, which we all love, or buying that extra car, or those pair of shoes, or that new TV, is that really a need or is it a want? And for my lovely ladies out there and my lovely gentlemen who love to be well groomed, I get it. But if you are in debt and you're still getting your nails done at 50 or $100 a pop, I don't know. I think you need to be prioritizing a little bit more. I'm all for living life. I'm all for enjoying yourself. But at the same time, if you really want to get out of debt, you've got to be a bit more strategic about how you spend your money and what takes priority. The last two years were really an eye opener for me in certain ways. I love to have my beauty treatments. I love to visit my therapist as much as I can. However, when we were in lockdown, everything was shut down. I had to learn how to administer all of my treatments for myself. I had to learn things like, you know, getting my nails done, which, you know, these were done at home. I had to learn how to do my hair, my waxing, you know, my brows, all of that. All of the things I usually go to my beauticians for, I had to learn how to do that. And it's actually made me a lot more self-sufficient. So I know that regardless of where I go, as long as I have my, you know, beauty kit with me, I'll be fine. I can survive. So again, consider the things you spend your money on. Are they needs or are they wants? If you can do without it you probably don't need it in your life. The fifth point, which is a little bit controversial, is friends, those you keep around you. If you are an individual who's very outgoing, perhaps you have a lot of friends and your friends love to party, they love going out, they love eating out, and perhaps you're not even on the same sort of income generating level as your friends, i.e. you don't earn the same sort of salary, but you aren't in a situation where you feel that you can be honest with your friends around your finances, well, firstly, maybe you need to find new friends. But secondly, and I think more importantly, the onus is on you to take care of yourself first. If you get into debt because you're trying to be like the Joneses or you're trying to mimic friends who, you know, may not even have debt in their lives, well, they won't be there with you when the banks come chasing after their funds or perhaps your creditors are chasing after their funds and you're not able to pay and you lose your home or you lose some assets, again, because you're trying to keep up with your friends. Another thing to bear in mind is that you are an average of those around you. I think it's you're an average of the closest five people to you. So if you have friends who perhaps embrace a lifestyle of frivolous debt or bad debt, well, you most likely won't be making great decisions. Perhaps being more honest with your friends and saying to them, I can't afford to go out as much as we used to. I'm trying to focus on getting my finances right. And if they're good friends, they'll understand. Number six, and my bonus point on what might be keeping you poor is lack of knowledge. The sad thing about our educational system today is that as children, we're taught the basic things that we need in order to, I suppose, become responsible adults, become knowledgeable adults, but we're not taught about financing, which actually affects each and every one of our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Because you are not taught that in school, you have to be responsible for gaining financial knowledge, financial education, investment knowledge, whatever it might be, to ensure that you are armed with good information that will actually help get you into a better financial situation. And because we are not giving these courses at primary school or secondary school, I think the average person may not be armed with the right financial information to ensure that they don't get into debt in the future. So a lot of us are struggling now as adults because of the decisions we've made in the past, which may have been prevented if we had been better armed with proper information. So I would plead with you to ensure that as you are consuming content from the likes of Netflix, you know, entertaining content on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok, you're also taking out time to consume content that means you're investing in yourself. You are investing in your future. You'll thank me for it later. If you've enjoyed the content and you aren't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos on investments, on money issues, issues and lifestyle in general. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.